it's not news that Nigeria operates one of the most expensive democracies in the world, with a bicameral legislature where lawmakers are paid in millions to an executive arm with an unending list of portfolios and aids trillions of naira spent. What is news, though, is President Muhammad Buhari's promise to look inwards and cut cost of governance. Hello and welcome to Standpoint. I'm Ibrahim Shita. I would mean the studio, a former uh, member of the House of Representatives and the Executive Director of Coalition of Democrats for Electoral Reform, CODA, Dr. Umi Bewaji. Thank you so much for coming on uh, Standpoint. My pleasure. Uh, it is not the first time we've been hearing government should cut cost and then it should try to prune down so many things that they are expending to ensure that uh, whatever it is that is gained by the government is uh, maintained or you know, circulate across the country. W what's your reaction to this? Well, definitely we have to cut cost. Um, when the, the percentage uh, of our budget that we are spending on recurrent expenditure at present is um, too high, and um, we have to bring that done but it's not just uh, at the federal level alone we have to do the same thing at the at the state in, in in fact in some states the situation is even worse a situation whereby a state is spending uh, about um, 80 percent 85 percent of the budget on recurrent expenditure and where you are having about only 15, 20 percent on capital uh, expenditure. So we have to cut down on the, on the cost of governance. If, if we have to cut down, what do you think mainly is responsible, apart from uh, spending on recurrent expenditure, what do you think is mainly responsible for the uh, spending so high that the government is you know, engaged in, instead of spending so little or so less as Nigerians are advocating? We, our bureaucracy is too large is extremely large for the kind of economy that we have. We have to drive a lot of people away from the public uh, sector, particularly the bureaucracy, mm -hmm. into the private sector. So because um, in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, there was this tendency for um, everybody to see government as, as the, probably the only source of revenue. There are states in Nigeria that the only provider of job they know right. is the government. So we have to change from that mentality of government providing jobs to a situation whereby government will only be an enabler of the making, right making, atmosphere. Making the society uh, en enabling for people for, to for people. venture in. Yes. Uh, uh, much recently, uh, the governor of Vegeti State, Governor Kaide Faimi, and also the senator, uh, senator uh, from Imo State, Richard Sokorocha, recommended that we go back to the unicameral or uh, unicameralism, uh, having just one chamber in the legislature as against the two chambers that we are running. Uh, do you also subscribe to that? It's, it's been talked about several times, but now we are having people in the authority now advocating the same thing. I think what Sokorocha is saying is we should have one senator per, per state. One I, senator per, per state. But, senator but Governor Kaide Faemi is saying that we should go back to unicameralism. I think um, that that is um, that is not workable, and that is not advisable for any student of um, federalism. There is no country in the world where you practice federalism that you maintain a unicameral legislature. It is not possible because of the advantages that a bicameral uh, parliament offers to. Uh, uh, a federal structure. Of course, in the states where you have uh, houses of assembly where the governors actually unpick the, the principal officers and all the rest. Mm -hmm. Well, these states, the, the, in Nigeria, the, the states' uh, houses of assembly, they, right. they are not uh, independent. And uh, a lot of them will depend on the government or the governor to survive. So, but at the federal level, we are, you know, we are a diverse nation. Uh, you know, our unity is in our diversity. And that is the essence of a bicameral legislature, whether it is in Europe or in the U.S. For example, uh, James Madison, yeah. the father of the American uh, uh, Constitution, 
The main reason he gave for, for recommending a bicameral legislature was for there to be equity among states. Representation at the House of Reps is on the basis of proportionality, proportionality of population. But at the state level, we hit a state as big and vast mm -hmm. as California or a state as, as small as... Um, well, some of the proponents of um, unicameralism are saying that oftentimes we always have human interest bill we were which are supposed to be passed in due time, but it takes a longer process for it to be passed. If the uh, House of Representatives passed it and then it goes to the Senate, it might be jettisoned. And they're saying that it will expedite passage of bill if we have unicameralism, do you subscribe to that? No, well? they, that is, uh, that is uh, a fallacy. Because the whole idea of uh, the, one of the reasons given by James Madison for recommending a, a bicameral legislature is to have a, 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 a deeper um, introspection. Because the Senate, when you look at the Constitution, the Senate is supposed to be composed of um, people who have age, experience, and maturity. Mm -hmm. On their side, who can be able to have a, a second thought on issues? Not, not that you just rush through the process in a, in, a, in, a, in a unicameral legislature. But we have bills that are supposed to have been passed, just like the uh, P I, P I G. There is PIG. no bill before the National Assembly today that it is the presence of the Senate that is disturbing that. There is no bill whatsoever like that. Right? Yes, there is no bill that its passage is being ended just because we have a, a bicameral legislature. Instead, what you have in the state is a situation whereby, assuming a governor wants to remove his deputy, they can run through the entire process in one day. And that is what a bicameral legislature is supposed to prevent. So we cannot. What the governors are enjoying in the states, where they have an autocratic parliament, right. can never be, be allowed at the federal level. So even if you have to say, okay, let us let us examine this um, unicameral legislature, because just like we have proponents, we also have people who are saying, just like you saying, that it's not going to work for this country, looking at the diversity that we have in this country. But if we have to do it, what procedure would, it, would, it, would we have to go through? Well, if you want to have a unicameral legislature, then I would rather you scrap the House of Reps. Then you have the Senate. Because, don't forget, look at the 1960 Constitution. Right. What does it say? You have a Senate, Section 36. You have a Senate, uh, which is composed of 12 senators from each of the three regions. The uh, Northern Nigeria, Western Nigeria, and Eastern Nigeria contributed 12, 12 senators. 12 senators per region. Right. And that makes 36 senators for the entire and the idea is for, for there to be equity among the component units of the federation. Don't forget, we call this country the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Nigeria it yeah. is a federal republic. So if you want to have a, 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 a unicameral legislature, mm -hmm. it must then reflect that federal structure, whereby the regions of the, of the country that make up Nigeria will be equally and proportionally represented. Even if this has been said, who, who do you think would definitely want to even bail the cards if we have to just uh, say, let us try to practice unicameralism? Do you think the current Senate, um, the current um, lawmakers that we have occupying the National Assembly, we even want to, you know... Uh, this, uh, you know the the same thing I want to say to Governor Fayemi, yeah. if you are so much interested in cutting costs, maybe we should start looking at how we can reduce the number of states that we have. Maybe we should have maybe the six zones. We should turn the Going back to regions, yes. regionalism. Yes, we can go back to re regions, or we can have super states. We can have the six states of the, of the Western Nigeria forming a single state. So we have, presently we have an unofficial six zones. We can turn those six zones into uh, six states, or whatever name we want to call it, that would then give us six parliaments mm -hmm. instead of the 36 parliaments that we have now. So how will the that six parliaments how will the six parliaments now operate? Let okay. us let us understand. Okay, if we have to uh, go back to regionalism, just like you you're proposing, so how will the six parliaments operate? 
it for the benefit of the country. It will operate the same way as this present state, um, you know, these glorified local governments that we have, that we are calling state. It will operate the same way. People have forgotten we have 774 mm. local governments in Nigeria. And all these 774 local governments, they have parliaments. They have parliament. They have principal officers. They have all that. And that is where the money is going. Not the, three, the, the uh, 109 the, the number of senators that we have. But, but we need to get something very, very, uh, uh, very straight. Um, since 1979, when we adopted the bicameral legislature in this country, what has it really benefited Nigeria so far? No, we, we adopted bicameral legislature right from independence. We had a Senate yeah, in yeah, the 1960 yeah, constitution. Yeah. We had a Senate in the 1963 constitution and the 19... Even in the, in the, in the, in the regions then, we had the House of Chiefs. Right. We, so this, the regions then even operated bicameral uh, legislature. But in the House of Chiefs, you know, these are eminent others. So which means the premier on most occasions would differ to them on many state issues. So the idea is to act as checks and balances on executive recklessness. And as James Madison said, in order to prevent a situation of the rise of a civilian autocrat. So if you want to prevent then the... I, I, have, have we achieved, that's the question, have we really achieved this goal of a bicameral legislature in Nigeria since the time we adopted it? It's a democracy is a process. You know, I am looking forward to a situation whereby one party will control the House of Reps and another party will control the Senate. That is how to achieve it. That is how to cut down... Okay, having a party controlling the House of Reps? Yes. And, uh, House of Reps, rather, and then House of Senate, another party doing that. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll, try to ex we'll try to explore that and how you really mean by that and how we can achieve that in this country uh, as, as we uh, continue our conversation. We'll take a break now and be back with discussions. Stay with us. You're watching Standpoint, and I've been discussing with a legal practitioner, a lawyer, uh, Honorable Wumi Bewaji. We've been talking about the advocacy to cut cost in the uh, cut cost of governance so that Nigeria or everyone would definitely uh, benefit from good governance. In Nigeria. Yeah, we left off at um, you saying, telling us that we should have a party running the Senate and another party running the House of Representatives. Uh, so in, uh, that's, um, in, in other words, you're saying that we should have two party system in the country. Is that the position you, you, you're putting forth? No, that is what, I, what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that when we get, you know, Nigeria's democracy is 20 years. I am looking forward to a, a day when maybe we will have a president from one party, right. then the Senate is controlled by another party. And maybe even a third party might control the, the House of Reps. So that way, that is the way to enjoy, you know, the benefits of a, a bicameral a parliament. Um, that, that, reminds, that reminds me, uh, talking about um, unicameralism, because that's the crux of our conversation, and saying all to achieve um, the cut in government spending. Uh, China, we have um, 3,000, they have 3,000 people representing them in, the represent, uh, uh, in their own uh, house because approximately half of the world's sovereign states are currently running unicameralism. China, for instance, uh, has th uh, 3,000 and also New Zealand has about uh, uh, 920. Then Vatican also runs the same thing as unicameral legislature. So if you're saying Nigeria is so big, and we can't run, we can't adopt that system. How much of China with 1.3 billion people? Well, the idea of um, a bicameral parliament is to take care. When you read the 1960 constitution right. and the 1963 constitution, the idea is to take care of the diversity. So, in countries where you have uh, where there is homogeneity. Mm -hmm then definitely you can practice a unicameral system. But take, for example, uh, Canada, uh, or Germany. So, well, of course, they practice a federal uh, system. bicameral yeah, system. Bicameral. Yeah. And the idea is that, well, the, the first parliament, the House of Reps, for example, the representation will be based on population. And that is why a state like Lagos will produce 
more number of uh, House of Reps member than a state like Ekiti. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the Senate, when you read the 1960 Constitution, it was on the basis of equality, equality of the component units of Nigeria. So at that time, we had three regions. So 12 regions, I mean 12 senators, sorry, represented each region. So that made 36 right. at the federal level. Okay, well, um, the governor of Miami also said, okay, fine, if we really have to cut the cost of governance, uh, ask us to go back to the Stephen Orosai uh, on side reports uh, that we should go ahead to implement it because the reports actually recommended scrapping and merging of 220 out of the existing 541 government agencies. So, because most of them are duplicating functions. But why is it that we find it very difficult to implement what we sponsor with our ardent money in the first place? We find it very difficult to implement them in this country. Exactly. That's what I am saying. Now, you have, when you have over 500 agencies, you know, government agencies, that is not that it so 109 senators is not the problem, the most urgent problem Nigeria is facing. So the number of agencies, even ministries that we have, we should amend the constitution mm. in such a way that we don't have to have 36 ministers from uh, from each state. I mean from 36 ministers or a minister from each state that will then make it compulsory for the president to appoint the minimum number of 36 ministers. We can have, um, uh, we can have 12 ministers, or uh, we can have 12 ministries, and that way we will be able to cut costs. So we, you're saying that we have to shrink some of the ministries Of altogether. the bureaucracy like uh, I, you, you remember uh, the, the ministry of, uh, which was headed by the former Lagos State Governor, um, yeah. Babatunde Fashola, Fashola yes. he, was, he was handling three ministries, mm -hmm. three government ministries, yeah. uh, namely housing, power, and also infrastructure, uh, works rather. Mm -hmm. and now they have to just take power out of it. Mm -hmm. So you're now, also, you're now also advocating that we should have, you know, no, we should reduce, now, uh, you know, we, sh we should not together. have more than maximum of 18 ministries. 18 ministries. Wouldn't because it not be too, too heavy for one person to... It won't to, be too to heavy. The ministries are not run by, by ministers. They are run by, by civil servants. So most of these agencies can be merged. All these over 400 agencies can be reduced to like 50. Okay, since you're a lawyer, this uh, Stephen Orosai's um, uh, report that has not been implemented, the government said that it's uh, not going to implement it because the money to be saved from the exercise is negligible and does not worth the stress. And secondly, the legal framework is not in place for its implementation. So as a lawyer, how do you, how, what would you say to the government, you know, based on their reasons not to have not implemented this report? Well, government, all over the world, government thrives on waste. And that is why government, uh, government is not good in business. So, of course, the Orosaya report was, at the, as at the time we had it, right. it was overdue. So, and uh, at the end of the day, we have all, the, there are several other reports mm -hmm. that have not been implemented. But without even any report, we all know that Nigeria's bureaucracy is large. And that is, the, that is where the waste is. Because the, the overhead, uh, the overhead, the cost is, uh, is extremely high. And I believe strongly that we can do, uh, we can do um, like something like forty percent capital if we cut that if we cut cost and reduce the cost of governance. The cost of governance for me is the two large bureaucracy that we have and that we need to cut. Okay, as as we are costing him, uh, one of the things also mentioned by the governor uh, is that. Don't talk about security votes. It's something that operates all over the world. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. Uh, so it's something we cannot also, also say the government should, you know, jettison. That security vote has to be there. I know this particular security vote has generated lots of tongues, you know, wagging over this. Do you also feel the security vote is a thing that we shouldn't talk about? There is nothing. I, I would be, I, I'm very sure maybe that, that will not be what um, we've known. Governor Fire, uh, Fire. Fire, I mean, will not 
say that we should not talk about it. Governor Fire means a Democrat. You can have security vote where we must have accountability and transparency. So let us know how the money is being spent and on what. So you cannot say that you have um, X amount of money and then you will not be accountable right. or there will be no transparency. You should account for it. And every member of the state, every citizen of the state right. must know how the security vote has been spent in the course of a year. Right. Finally, uh, now that um, some ask the why the debate is still going on, saying unicameralism, bicameralism, what measures do you think we should put in place to ensure that we still have to cut this cost till whether we are going to go for the unicameralism or bicameralism at the end of the day? The first thing for me is we must, we must reduce the number of states. 36 uh, houses of uh, uh, assembly is it's too large, too bogus. We can reduce that to like six, not more than six. Mm. So that way we will be able, and then the number of uh, local government. That we, I don't think we need 774 parliaments like in the local earlier. government. We should scrap the, the legislative uh, arm in, uh, in the local uh, government so, so that we can have administrators in the local government supported by some people that will be unpicked and then the, the regions also, whatever superstructure right. we have, should be able to determine whatever local uh, uh, administration will be suitable for its state. Before 1977, uh, be before 19, 1976 local government reforms, right. we did not have a uniform local government system in Nigeria. So we should go back to that 1960, uh, the Republican, uh, constitu uh, Republican constitution, constitution, yes. All right, thank you so much, um, uh, lawmaker, a former lawmaker and also a legal practitioner and lawyer, uh, Honorable Bemaji. Really appreciate you for coming on the program. My pleasure. And that's our package on today's edition of Standpoint. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ibrahim Shita. Bye now.